Maya, who calls herself Supergirl, says she often sleeps just three hours a night. When told Lopez claimed to get eight, Mariah said, quote, if I had the luxury of not actually having to sing my own songs, I'd do that. What it is, ho, what's up? When we talk about industry plants, it's people who are placed in a spotlight for super sodom, not for the talent, but more so for a cash grab or to take the spotlight from another artist. Jennifer Lopez's entire career is based off of being a plant who used vocals from talented people across the industry to make a career for herself. And it 100% worked. She has been able to become a superstar off the backs of real singers. People like Britney Spears and Paula Abdul and Jennifer are great performers. They bring the entertainment mixed with their energy. You're getting a show. But Britney and Paula got criticized for lip singing on stage. Jennifer doesn't. She usually is able to get away with not sounding the best on stage. She doesn't get the same criticisms, not even for not singing her own songs. Regardless, she still has a huge following when it comes to her music. She became the it Latina girl in the Hispanic and urban community. For so many years, how did Jennifer Lopez go from fan favorite into someone a lot of people actually dislike? It seems as if Jennifer is going through some realization where she feels like she doesn't get a lot of recognition for her work in the industry. Creating a documentary completely funded by her, but receiving nothing but negative reviews for this. She even tried to take matters into her own hands and create bots and copyright striking anyone that spoke negatively about her documentary. J. Lulu's team has officially hired bots to uh, dispel her being a menace to waiters all of that well i work at a, the restaurant where i had dinner today she was very regal i had the honor of presenting her salad this is some name another name well i work at the restaurant where i had dinner today she was very regal i had the honor of preparing her salad <laughs> Jennifer has been trying to step back into the light as a sweetheart, the people's princess, but over 20 years later, it's not that simple, especially the way her career was created. She wants to be viewed as an artistic person, but she's never been an artistic artist. This is a longevity in the music industry, the downfall of Jennifer Lopez's career. Unfortunately, we can't talk about Jennifer without talking about Mariah, because the only real reason Jennifer has a career was because Tommy Motola hated his ex-wife Mariah so much that he used her to take Mariah down. Is there a chance this could have worked? Possibly, but only in an alternate universe where Mariah wasn't talented. Mariah Carey's childhood was very difficult, with her parents divorcing when she was a toddler and her not being able to grow up with her siblings because they were far older than her. They all individually had their own set of problems that impacted her childhood. Experiencing emotional neglect and mistreatment from her mother, her mom Patricia was a talented opera singer, but she had to put her dreams on hold to care for the family. Although Mariah's mom taught her how to sing, there was still a weird mother-daughter dynamic. When Mariah was young, her mother once told her, you should only hope that one day you will become half the singer I am. Then her sibling's relationship dynamic was very complicated. She began pursuing a music career and met Tommy Mottola along the way. Tommy Mottola was the head of Sunny Music. He signed her to Columbia Records when she was 18 years old. He put belief in Mariah's career and voice as a singer, something her mom tried to suppress. They tied the knot in 1993, three years after the release of her debut album. Mariah was 23 and Tommy was 45. Coincidentally, he ended his 19-year marriage in 1990, three years prior. The relationship was nothing short of toxic as he made her feel like a prisoner. Her not being able to freely move around, he had a great impact on her career during the good and the bad times. But she couldn't deal with the level of abuse in the marriage. When they divorced, that's when she started to feel the effects of the position he held. He started a mission to tarnish her career, and Jennifer was used as a pawn. Although Jennifer didn't hold the torch to everything that happened in her career, she was still a willing participant. Jennifer was an aspiring dancer. Her big break came when she was offered a job as a flag girl on In Living Color in 1990. The show's choreographer, Rosie Perez, said that she chose Jennifer because she had that look that she knew the audience would tune into. But she did clash with choreographers and future acting agents about her weight because she was curvy. 
The Fly Girls were very popular and they were even considered by the head of Virgin Records as a group that could rival the Spice Girls. But that deal fell through. After two years at In Living Color, Jennifer went on to dance for various artists like Janet Jackson and started music videos. She started working her way through Hollywood through acting, letting the huge role of Selena. Selena's biopic was a huge deal and Selena's family had a hand in making of the movie. They knew Jennifer was the right person to play their daughter and they were definitely right. Jennifer played the role very well and had the same silhouette as Selena. They were both shapely and good dancers. So it was a perfect casting. I approached it from the point of actually learning to sing like her and the style she did, what she actually really liked to sing and what she really got off on. You throw all those ingredients in the pot and boom, you know, then you have people saying, wow, this is so much like her. They say you look like her, when in reality I'm sitting right here in front of you and you know I don't look anything like her. It wasn't about that, it was about being like her and you know, being her. I had a great time wearing all those costumes. One of the huge appeals of Selena, one of the reasons she was so hugely popular was because she didn't change herself. You know, sometimes when you turn on Spanish television you'll see a lot of these women with their hair dyed blonde and all this stuff, you know, and Selena wasn't like that. She would stand up there and you would look up at her and if you were Latin in the audience you would go, that's me. That's me up there. That's what I look like. She was just herself and that was enough. The role of Selena opened so many doors for Jennifer and got her the Best Actress nomination for the Golden Globe Awards. Her later roles as Anaconda and Out of Sight is her establishing herself as an actress and she became the highest paid Latin actress. Her stint as Selena inspired her to start singing. This led to her releasing a demo in Spanish, the demo landing in Tommy Mottola's lap, but he quickly persuaded her to start singing in English. Jennifer's look, combined with her dancing, seemed like the perfect formula to get back at his ex Mariah. Mariah can sing, but she's not a dancer. JLo can't really sing, but she'll dance her ass off. So she became Tommy's main priority, and his first mission was stealing a song from Mariah to give to JLo. Although Mariah still had great success with the Butterfly album, and to a lesser extent with Rainbow, an effort to be free from her contract and finally rid herself of her former life, Mariah moving to Virgin Records, Jennifer Lopez became Sonny's it girl. From JLo's first album, she started working with a few people, including Diddy. Her debut song, If You Had My Love, from her first album charted at number one on Billboard Hot 100 for five weeks straight. The chorus was sung by Shanietta Harrell. Harrell's vocals are mixed like background vocals in the song, but that song wasn't meant for JLo. It was stolen and rewritten for JLo per Diddy's request. In time when her first album came out, and Rodney Jerkins actually came and wrote this wonderful song for me called um, If I Gave Love. And you know, the Jennifer Lopez song was If You Had My Love. He wrote the same song for her. I heard that it was because Puff Daddy walked in and said, and heard my song and said, I want that song. And he was like, yeah, well, that's already taken. You know, we wrote that for Shantae and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I want that song. So Rodney wrote really the same song. Honestly, if you hear my song, it's the really? same song. Oh, Mine says, man. if you had my love and baby that gave me, if you had my trust, would you use it against me? Hers, I don't know. I don't, can't even remember because it's so close. I can't even sing it right now. If you had my love. Yeah, same song. But we should have been aggressive instead of backing off our single because that was going to be my next single after Shantae's Got a Man. And we backed off of it because J-Lo had such a machine at the time. We should have just stepped out. J-Lo was gearing towards a soft R&B route and she still made time for her Latin audience, collaborating with Mark Anthony on the song No Me Amis, reaching number one on Billboard's Hot Latin chart. And her third single, Waiting for Tonight, became her second top 10 hit. For oh. Jennifer's relationship with Diddy was pretty closed off. Not much was known regarding their relationship dynamics. It was a good look for both of them until it wasn't. In December of 1999, Jennifer and Diddy went to the club in Times Square, New York. They were arrested in connection with a shooting where a woman was severely harmed and shot in the face. They were charged with criminal possession of a weapon and stolen property. 
Of course, Jennifer was exonerated from the situation. It didn't stop their relationship. In 2000, they walked hand in hand at the 42nd Grammy Awards, where she donned her famous plunging green Versace dress. The dress generated worldwide attention and became the most searched query in Google's history, leading to the creation of Google Images. If you follow JLo or have seen JLo, you know this will not be the last time you see this dress, as this became a very monumental moment in her life wearing this outfit. Later that year, Jennifer starred in the psychological thriller The Cell. She played a psychologist who uses radical experimental therapy to enter the mind of a killer. The movie received mixed reviews but was a box office success. Now we won't really be discussing Jennifer's acting too much, we're just going to focus on her music. But I will say when it comes to acting, Jennifer does shine the brightest. She's an A-lister who's been in countless movies even before her music career, landing high roles. She's good at expressing emotion and has a decent range in comedy, drama, and action. If she really wants to be remembered, she should have just continued to focus on acting because that's where it got her her first million and fame. But so many good things still came out of her music career. Jennifer became the first woman to have a number one film and album at the same time in January of 2001. The movie was The Wedding Planner, which we all have seen before, and the album is J-Lo, which is her most successful album that also had the most chart-topping singles. This is also when the sabotage on Mariah Carey's career began. Mariah Carey wrote in her memoir that her ex used his power to make her 2001 movie Glitter a complete flop. She says that much of what went wrong with Glitter led back to Tommy. He was furious when she cut the strings he used to manipulate her. There was no way he would allow her to have a huge success after leaving him and Sonny. He was not going to let her or Glitter shine. That same year, things got even worse. Mariah described working on the lead single for Glitter, a song titled Loverboy. She said her original idea was to use a sample from the song Firecracker by Yellow Magic Orchestra. Tommy's spies and Sonny found out and the sabotage started. By this time, her and Diddy were no longer dating. Her song I'm Real was an attempt for Lopez to appeal to a more urban audience and give her album a boost on the charts. Ashanti's demo vocals were kept for the final version, including taking over the chorus and recording ad libs for the track. Ashanti yeah, I wrote a song for her and I also referenced I'm Real for her and they left my background vocals on the record. And people they say, you know, are you the ghost voice for <laughs> Ashanti received credit for background vocals but not as a co-writer. Using background vocals is not uncommon in the music industry. The issue is that Jennifer passed many vocals from other singers as her own, essentially committing vocal fraud. Even though the song was stolen and not predominantly sung by Jennifer, Mariah's Loverboy was still the top charting song that year. The term background vocalist is misleading when the background singer performs the most memorable parts of the song. Songs like Play, Christina Milan co-wrote the song. Christina's vocals are heard all over the track, most notably in the chorus in which J-Lo barely sings a note. Christina does get credit for the background vocals, but she did write the song and sung most of it. In the I'm Real remix, it's Ashanti's vocals. On Jennifer Ain't It Funny remix, Ashanti's vocals are all over the song. Ashanti wrote the song, sang the chorus, and added ad-lib like she did for I'm Real. And then there was the sabotage. After hearing my new song, using the same sample I used, Sony rushed to make a single for another female entertainer on their label, whom I don't know. They used the firecracker sample and released it before Loverboy. Ja Rule and I wrote a song together too, and next thing you know, Tommy was calling up his manager, Irv Gotti, asking him and Ja to collaborate on a duet for the same female entertainer's record, leaving me to scurry and remake the song. Irv has even discussed it since in an interview on Day Seuss and Mero. He knows we just did this shit with Mariah, and he's trying to fuck with Mariah. This was sabotage, plain and simple. Look, I was well trained in the art of turning shit situations into fertilizer, but Tommy knew fucking with my artistic choices was particularly low. But I wouldn't let him stop me. I switched gears and turned from the techno influence to a funkier sample from Candy by Cameo. You can't go wrong with Cameo. And after all that shit, Loverboy ended up being the best-selling single of 2001 in the United States. I'm real. Love Don't Cost a Thing is one of JLo's biggest singles to date. There's a rumor that the song is about Diddy because he would give her gifts to make her feel happy. 
During her relationship with him, she says that that was the first time anyone has ever cheated on her. That was another one. <laughs> um. And what about Sean Combs, Puffy, P. Diddy, the man who courted controversy, if not outright danger? He always seemed to be the one in control. We wondered, looking at the girl on the red carpet, who was she? Was she afraid? Um, no. I don't think she was afraid. I just think that I, at that time, was, uh, cared very deeply, uh, uh for, for Sean. And, um, you know, we just, we just didn't have the same kind of ideals about life and family and stuff like that. And it just wasn't a good relationship for me. It didn't have so much to do with him as it had to do with me at the time. I had to learn, um, to care about myself a little bit more and put up certain boundaries of what I would accept and wouldn't accept because I don't. Canela Cox served her vocals. Canela was uncredited for her work on the song. When it came to JLo and Mariah, the public began to take notice that there was some tension between them, as Mariah famously said that she doesn't know her. Und was ist mit JLo? I don't know. Die kenne ich nicht. Then in a Larry King interview, Mariah threw more shades. Does all the attention Jennifer Lopez gets, does that bother? Is there, is there rivalries, by the way, in this business? There are rivalries, but I don't think she has anything to do with me. I mean, my whole thing is singing, writing She's songs. She's an actress. Yeah, and, you know, I've been doing this, you know, my whole life. Singing is, the, is first and foremost. It's a God-given talent that I'm grateful for. Her thing is something different. They've gone back and forth with the I don't know her, she don't know me, both women are pretty professional, but they're never going to be friends, and that's okay. But besides the petty banter, that's the entirety of the relationship to the public eye. Jennifer was used as a pawn to pivot Mariah's career, and it didn't work, and they never tried to hash it out. For Jennifer's third album, she had another hit on her hands. Natasha Ramos is a singer who came out and expressed that her vocals were used for Jenny on the block. Although she got credit, she doesn't receive royalties. She recorded five songs for Jennifer This Is Me album and only got 3500 Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the block. Used to have a little, now I have a lot. No matter where I go, I know where I came from. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the block. Used to have a little, now I have a little. <laughs> No matter where I go, I know where I came from. From the Bronx! And yes, that is definitely me saying from the Bronx. No, I'm not from the Bronx. I'm from Connecticut. I was on four other songs. I was on I'm Glad, The One, Loving You, Baby I Heart You, and, um, and Jenny from the Block. I feel like all of the other ones, excluding Jenny from the Block, are very much true blue background vocals. Um, I think the problem with Jenny from the Block is that they cut my laugh and um, they kept ad libs and they turned her vocals like all the way down. And the from the Bronx part is me and it's just, you know, um, yeah yeah natasha sings the entire chorus and the bridge her other singles all i have featuring ll cool j was a number one hit the album was based off of her relationship with ben affleck who was her fiance a song on the album titled dear ben the album became a commercial success, achieving the highest opening sales week of her career. But it did receive negative reviews by critics calling the album uninteresting. The album was based off of Ben, but it didn't save their relationship. In 2003, due to their public relationship with Ben and the tabloid depiction of her as a demanding diva, a description that still follows her 20 years later, she was going through a lot as she felt like things were crumbling down for her. Ben and Jennifer met on the set of Giggly in 2001. The movie was released and it was considered the worst movie of the year, but they continued their romance. In 2003, three days before they were set to get married, they called off their wedding. The rumor was that Jennifer was a diva did circulate for a while. It started with the movie Enough in 2002. The director found it difficult to work with her because he said he couldn't get a hold of her during shoots. He did say though that she is laser focused when she's working, but everything else was stressful because of the deadlines. But this reputation didn't stop there. 
After their breakup with Ben, Jennifer reconciled her relationship with Mark Anthony. They did date a little bit in the 90s, but it didn't work out. So less than a week after Anthony's divorce, the former Miss Universe, Deanera Torres, was finalized. Him and Jennifer got married in 2004. A year later, Jennifer dropped her album Rebirth. Upon its release, Rebirth received generally mixed reviews. While some praise is up-tempo material, other critics were unfavorable of its mild content and Lopez's vocals. The album experienced moderate success. The lead single Get Right was originally meant for Usher. Producer Rich Harrison wrote the song alongside Usher. It was originally recorded as Ride for Usher's 2004 album Confessions. After the song failed to make the album, Harrison passed the track over to Jennifer as an apology for giving one thing to Amiri. Well, then again, her vocals on the song were actually sung by Yana Crawley. That's me on the background. Where? What you mean? That's my voice singing that part. Not on the actual record. On the record. That's me. We were just talking about this. Are you serious? We were just that's my, I'm, about That's me singing that let song. Me, let me tell you something. That's God. Go ahead. Tell me. Did we not just have a conversation? Are you serious? And it's because I knew it wasn't J-Lo. And that's not shade. Oh Are my God. you serious? Okay. I just knew it wasn't her. Right, but people you don't sing their backgrounds texture. all the time. People don't sing back okay. their backgrounds, right? Exactly. Right. So I said, I know that ain't J Lo. Who yeah. is that in the background? That's me. That's so weird. That is me. I'm doing all her backgrounds on that song. The album peaked at number two and spawned a second single, Hold You Down, that didn't have the same success. Mark Anthony and Jennifer were going strong, so they decided to merge their careers together by doing a movie and a tour. During the final day of their joint tour, Jennifer announced that they were expecting twins, releasing an all-Spanish album the same year. The album debuted in the top 10 of the Billboard 200 and achieved the highest first week sales for a Spanish album. But they didn't have any singles chart to success, and her second album, same year, Brave, which was her lowest charting album worldwide. The next year, they welcomed their beautiful fraternal twins. In 2010, Jennifer became a judge on American Idol for its 10th season, replacing Simon Cowell. Jennifer had the resume for a great candidate as a judge. At this point, she's been a professional singer for over a decade, and she has a huge fan base that can draw in more viewers. But when it came to her judging, there was a few instances where she learned a few things about singing. I'm not as taken by the smoke and mirrors of pentatonics as these two are. I'm no, just not. I, I, I'm not. <laughs> no, it's I, tone. There's tone, and it's not just the you, gymnastics. It just didn't do it for me. What's the thing you're talking about? Pentatonics. Pentatonics. Yeah, it's basically we have 12 notes. You're gonna throw these these things at America, and America's gonna be like, what? The? No, but you know what's wrong with challenging America? I like that. Okay, Challenge so here it me. is. There Tell are, me there what are, the hell it there is. There are 12 notes. Yes. You know that you have do re mi fa sol la yes. There's also do di re re mi yes, fa fi. Yes, yes, yes. There's 12. Pentatonics are the classic go-to's for. R&B singers, gospel singers, jazz musicians. Right. Those are the five notes that you hear everybody do the runs on. Those right. five notes in any different. You know too damn much. Overall, she did a great job as a host. A lot of critics actually said that her being on American Idol rejuvenated her career. Before American Idol, it was a slow moment for her when she took some downtime to raise her children. So it was a comeback for her public appearance. She dropped her seventh studio album, Love, was released in early 2011. While the album itself was a moderate commercial success, the single On the Floor was the year's highest selling single by a female artist. That song was everywhere. The hook was everything for the 2011 dance craze era. In 2012, she and Mark Anthony announced their divorce. Even during this difficult time for her for the next few years, Jennifer kept busy. She starred in the Hispanic talent show, going to 21 countries while also dropping the single Dance Again, reaching number 17 on the US Billboard Hot 100. Jennifer launched the Dance Again World Tour, her first headlining tour grossing over 1 million per show. She continued to star in a few movies, and she decided to try something different and serve as an executive producer of the ABC television series, The Foster. Her eighth studio album, AKA, was released in 2014 through Capitol Records, experiencing lackluster sales, becoming her lowest selling album in the US. 
In 2016, she had her own Vegas residency, which is a huge deal for an artist, and she got paid a crazy amount of money. She performed 120 shows during the three-year run, grossing over 100 million in ticket sales. In 2019, she executive produced and starred in the crime drama film Hustlers. At this point, we know Jello can put on a performance on screen as an actress. In 2020, Jennifer got the honor to grace the Super Bowl stage. Jennifer is a good performer and she brings the energy, but she was upset that she had to share the Super Bowl stage with the legendary Shakira. Certain songs that we sing though. You okay. know what I mean? Like we so have to have our singing dropping. moments. Okay. It's not gonna be a dance right. review. Right. So like we have to sing our message. Get a feel of it now when you say six minutes. This is the worst idea in the world to have two people do the Super Bowl. It was no I would give her grace because she was told she was going to be the only headliner. Eventually in 2021, she rekindled her relationship with Ben Affleck who had divorced his wife. They got married a year later. Her documentary for the Super Bowl was her first attempt to document her moments to show her audience a different side of her. The docu actually had positive reviews and was well received. Unfortunately, her newest documentary, This Is Me Now, a sequel to the album This Is Me Then, has come with a lot of negative press. After her potential partners backed out, Jennifer financed the film herself for 20 million. This was seemingly a good idea since her first This Is Me project was a success and her last documentary was also a success, but this was actually more damaging to her career. The audiences weren't receptive to Jennifer showing the real her. I like taking my hair out like this. It reminds me like when I was 16 in the Bronx. Running up and down the block. People have been clowning Jennifer as soon as it dropped because it seemed like everyone told her not to do this movie, but she felt like it would be compelling. The thing you discover, like you do with, with alcohol, is that there isn't enough alcohol in all the liquor stores in the world to fill up that thing. And in Jennifer's case, uh, I don't think there's enough followers or, or, or movies or records or, or any of this stuff to, to still that part of you that still feels a longing and a pain. Ultimately, that's the work that you've got to do on your own. Since it's aired, several creators claim to have received copyright strikes on their TikTok accounts in response to their critical commentary on her documentary. You want more, I'll give you more. So you know how in recovery, they say the first step uh, to recovery is admitting you have a problem. I have a problem, and that is that uh, JLo copyright claimed all of us, myself included, got my account banned. I think that was it, because she didn't like the fact that we were using clips from her her narcissistic venture, her her cosplay of an era's tour film, I don't know what the fuck that is, um, to uh, point out all of the lies and narcissistic attributes um, that, you know, she has. So a lot of your favorite creators might be gone because of that. So um, it, since I now am in recovery, since I've admitted that's the problem, I need to heal and I'm gonna heal by uh, using blind items to expose what a narcissistic POS JLo is. How about this? Copyright strikes affect a creator's account greatly. For TikTokers who make a living from making videos, the move was viewed as a low blow from Jennifer's team. TikTok creator Kyle Marissa said that her account had received copyright strikes on every single video that contained footage from the greatest love story never told. Her TikTok account was banned. With this movie portraying her high ego tagged along with people saying it wasn't a good idea, it opened up a whirlwind of people coming out talking about how high Jennifer's ego and entitlement is. It's let's, Virgo yeah. season, let's dive old. Yeah. Jennifer Lopez held an audition for dancers for one of her tours. Most of the time, a dance audition, you're not getting paid. You've been there since 10 a.m. and you're auditioning until 6 p.m. Well, it's like stand-up, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, and you're not getting paid. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly, you don't get any money. Um, I love working for free! <laughs> yes, people judging you the whole time. <laughs> mm -hmm. She walks in the room and she said, um, thank you so much, you guys have worked so hard. Um, by a show of hands, um, if there are any Virgos in the room, can you just raise your hand? So a bunch of Virgos raise their hand. And she, she shot them on sight. Shot them on sight. 
<laughs> Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> what did she do? Did they have to she leave? She whispered to her assistant. No. She looked at them and she said, thank you so much for coming. Get out of here. Oh my God. And they had to leave. After and a celebrity was rude to you. Jennifer Lowe. Same, and I'm gonna try to tell them really quickly two stories about Jennifer Lopez being an awful human being. So number one, when she has drivers, the number one rule she has for them is they can't look at her, they can't talk to her, and her luggage is never allowed to touch the ground. If any of those things happen, she will go out of her way to make sure you get fired. Even if you have to look in the rear view mirror while you're driving, she will call that you trying to look at her and proceed to berate you. And I know this because my dad worked for that driving company and he refused to drive her whenever she came in town because of how awful she treated the drivers. Second story, she was with Ben, I believe at MGM or whichever casino. And Ben's a great tipper and he respects service workers. And so he tipped a lot of people a lot of money that night. Jennifer goes around to each of those people and takes back the tip and gives them maybe five, 10 bucks, maybe. She is an awful person. So I hate to be one of those people that say where there's smoke, there's fire, but there is definitely some truth to that woman in that attitude. Just from the stare and the way she approached the team, I got the feeling that she felt she was better than. And I feel like the other people around me came away with the same feeling, which is why Benny Medina and both Arthur was so like, at the time, I also had a friend on the team who was the receptionist and she had been working with the company for a longer time. And she said the same thing. Pretty much, she used to come in with Mark Anthony. Honey, Mark Anthony would speak. Jayla would kind of just be like, eh, yeah, whatever. And that's always been her disposition. This is why I don't pedestalize celebrities because you're not treating me as less than. No, ma'am, bye. Especially not when we're making millions for you. This ain't no uh, J-Lo bashing because right. she's crazy right. talented. Right. Come on. Right. Can't put nothing on her. And she's a great actress, too. Right. You know, but but um, we used to hang out with, with me, her, my ex. We used to go to dinner together. Right. So I saw her at the upfronts. Um, it was me and Danny DeVito. Mm -hmm. And he's like, there's, a, there's, there's Jennifer Lopez over there. You don't know her, right? I'm like, yeah, I know her. So I go over there. And I'm like, what's up, girl? Shoot. Man, you blew up. What, what is going on? She's like, hey. So what's going really? on? What's going on? I, you know, just living like, you know, get some little carrot dip. Now I'm going, you know, what's in that carrot dip? You know, because she showed dip in my ass. You know what I mean? Right. So I just avoided her because you never know what someone's going through that right. day. Right, right, I could be misreading Right, it. right. You know, I always got to get the love, but, that, right. but that's from my profile. Right. From being the black and between the white right. and all that. So I'm needy in that right. way. I can admit that. Right. But I do love love. Right. She, we had the same uh, manager at one time. Right. And she was doing a video up in, up in, um, in the block. Yeah. Jenny, 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 Jenny from the block. Block, 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 block. Right, yeah. that one. And so, um, he said, why don't you go and visit her on the set, man? She would love to see you. And I was like, nah, that's all right. That's all right, man. Right. He's like, nah, man, come on, man. This is you. Come on, man. I was like, nah, that's all right, man. Right. That's all right, because one time is enough right. for me. Right. So, I go down on the platform, and there she is. You know? So I get down to the to the end of the thing and I look at her and Benny's going, yeah, come on, man, let her know you're here, man. I'm like, all right, man. And I go, Jennifer, what's up? And she goes, hey. So that was like the last, you know? I don't know how she's gonna be when I see her next, but the next time I saw her, I avoided her. Right. Cause I don't like feeling that way. Right. I don't wanna be around anybody yeah. who makes me feel like not I'm I'm not I'm less than because you gonna make me feel like I ain't important? These negative reviews alongside the singles that weren't really up to her fan standards led to the tour scheduled to run from June until August to be rebranded as the Greatest Hits Tour instead of a promotional run for her album. The tour previously titled This Is Me Live, according to Jennifer's social media post from February, now goes by the title This Is Me Live, The Greatest Hits. And her tour has not been selling well and she was forced to cancel a few dates. It's very interesting how this documentary had a whirlwind of negative effects because Jennifer is trying to portray herself as a real artist with a huge creative vision that has kept her career alive. She seems to have forgotten that the core of her career is based off of other people and most people aren't willing to give
give credit when it has been proven that you are not the creative. And what's even more intriguing is that her ghost singing would have really been forgotten because she is a great performer and actress, so her other works could have overshadowed it if her behavior of being an egotistical diva didn't override her career accomplishments. There are so many people that have come out with stories regarding her attitude, so now her mission to relate to the audience and show this artistic character is a fumble. Jennifer wants to solidify her legacy and she really has if you think about it. Jennifer, J-Lo, is a household name. She won't be forgotten but her attempts to not be forgotten is where she went wrong. And that is the downfall to her career. Cause when you're trying to prove something other than being who you are, it trumps all the authenticity we the public see. Well that concludes today's video. Make sure you like and subscribe and comment down below on what you think of Jennifer's longevity. Thank you guys for tuning in. Toodles!